So you ask an African-American family and a white family, how often do you speak about race? And the white family will say, you know, when something comes up, the African-American family will say every day. Right. Because when you are the ones that are engaging with this, you have to find ways to 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 maneuver through all of this. The first thing that I learned about Ukrainians, uh, older Ukrainians are actually very welcoming. So you don't get the sense of um, racist discourse among the population that was growing in the Soviet Union. Um, They tend to talk about friendship of the peoples, this kind of discussion that's that's still very, very much, especially in eastern Ukraine, you can still hear that among the older population. Um, But the younger population, I really was often shocked at what they would allow themselves to say, but not just about Africans, but just about anybody. People will say, I'm not a racist. Well, you know, you don't actually have to hurt somebody or you don't have to, you just have to catch yourself at, you know, at when you're doing this. And this was very difficult for me as well, too, catching my own self um, and, and dealing with a, with a lot of ways that I was raised. So I grew up in African-American neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey. The Ukrainian church was smack in the middle of a, of a black neighborhood. And it was like tunnel vision. It was like, well, now we're going to church and now we're going to the Ukrainian butcher and now we're doing this. And it's like everything kind of didn't exist or somehow wasn't part of our world. And then the interesting thing is also that immigrants moving here to the States, they pick up on that, right? They understand that social mobility, like uh, something about blackness is not right here in the States. Thinking of 1950s, right? When, when um, you know, our parents came and then how does that then play itself out in the home and in the school and everything else? Post Euromaidan, we see a very different discussion because now on the basis of 10 years of Africans appearing on stage in Ukrainian costumes. And honestly, Ukraine is the only place where this happens. You don't see this in Poland. You don't see Bulgaria. I mean, you have African students in all post-socialist countries. But in Ukraine, when they wear the vishuka and then they're on stage and they're singing this song, something happened. And, and again, we can't make a stereotype about everybody. And it's very almost dangerous to say, you know, younger Ukrainians, older Ukrainians. I, I, when I was doing research, I was very much in um, the towns, in the, bigger, in the bigger cities. And there's, again, a very different reaction when you see somebody and this is just the normal thing and then they get used to it and then they're over it versus in a village where maybe there's an unusual situation, right? And the one caution I have about that is that yes, we are now not overtly saying anything negative about um, especially African migrants and people who are chosen to live in Ukraine. They're very much in support of Euromaidan and and a lot of the the ways that Ukraine has changed um, since that time. They're very supportive of the war effort. But it seems we are still only comfortable with them when they were the Vishoka. It's like, okay, now you have the Vishoka, so now you're one of us, now you know where we are. Uh, And I think where we need to constantly remind ourselves and work towards this human rights issue and this idea of citizenship, that everybody um, should have equal rights and that Africans should not have to go. I mean, you you can't imagine, again, how complicated these systems are to get a passport if you're new to Ukraine. A lot of these People simply don't even know how to help themselves um, get situated. So we we do need to give them a, a helping hand.